Good evening, Shortcuts. Steven here. This is my final Shortcuts list before I take the month of April off. And I think uh, this is going to be the Rock and Pop and New Wave list. And I think this is potentially the greatest list of Rock and Pop I've ever had. Now, I am willing to take feedback on that, but I'm going to put it out there. Um, so we'll see. All right. Let's uh, get the formalities out of the way. The price list will go out 9 p.m. Wednesday, April 3rd, which is my son's birthday, at 9 p.m. Sydney time. If you would like to be on the list, drop me an email, shortcutsrecordsaus at gmail.com and without further ado i'm looking left and right because i'm actually not sure where to get started i'm gonna have to start here sticky fingers the rolling stones arguably their greatest record their first on rolling stones record after having spent the 60s on Decca. And is this the most iconic rock and roll sleeve of all time? It is certainly up there, Mr. Andy Warhol. You did well. Now, this is the Japanese first press. It has a working zipper, which I'm not going to pull too hard on, but I had it open earlier. There you go. I'll just move it halfway down. Um, it's in really nice condition. A little bit of corner ding, but the spine is superb. The back is superb. But there's so much more to this. It also has the Japanese single of um, Brown Sugar, A-side, Bitch, B-side, to go along with the album which is pretty extraordinary the japanese first press of sticky fingers with an absolutely beautiful condition single complete with the famous insert and the lyric sheet in great condition. So what do I think about this record? I think this record is a bloody masterpiece. From the opening track, Brown Sugar. Surely one of the most inexcusable songs in rock history. You've got racism, heroin, cunnilingus, um, slavery, all the bad stuff wrapped up in one monster riff. Fun fact for you all, a monster riff written by Mr. Mick Jagger, not Keith Richards. In fact, if Exile on Main Street is Keith Richards' opus, I think this is Mick Jagger's. Um, he's magnificent on this record uh i got the blues what a voice unbelievable just sings it incredibly twisting his voice into that full country for dead flowers and somehow making it work um arguably moonlight mile is a jazz song except when the blasts of guitar come in around the three and a half minute mark yet he carries it off and the sway that, and I, you know, Wild Horses that appeared on that Graham Parsons record a year or two before, and maybe my favorite on the album, Can You Hear Me Knocking? Um, that amazing instrumental breakdown and the sloppy, kind of slurpy, you got to move. The album's brilliant. 
It's brilliant. It's in the top echelon of the greatest rock and roll albums of all time. And what's fantastic, that package, I've never seen anything as cool as, look at that. Look at that sleeve. It's just wonderful. Um, brilliant, brilliant album. Japanese first press. In great condition. With an extraordinary extra. What do you think? I mean, that's pretty cool. Got to lead off with that. Sounds great. That's <laughs> what I played it earlier. Sounds awesome. Oh, man. What a lineup. I think I'm going to have to go here next. I've got two Japanese Master Sound recordings. Now, Master Sound was Japanese technique developed uh, predominantly mid 70s to kind of mid 80s. And they used it to um, enhance the um, clarity of the records that they thought were should be showcased with the best possible vinyl, the best possible pressing, the best possible everything. And I've got two here. So the first is the Japanese master sound with OB of Thriller. Now, if you're in any way a Michael Jackson fan, this has got to be on your radar. So it comes in this box, complete with OB, which is in pretty nice condition. I would say strong VG+. Plus. Then it's got all the books and posters. But the big difference is an extra thick, like really seriously extra thick sleeve. And I'm just going to pull out the vinyl so you can see what this looks like. It's pretty fabulous really thick slab of vinyl the master sound of thriller a record you all know and love and even to this day if someone says oh play me something i'll often reach for side b and put on beat it as just a way to break the ice with just about anyone now that is pretty magnificent now, this master sound is a little bit different. I think equally interesting. It is the Japanese master sound of Richard Wright's Wet Dream. Richard Wright of Pink Floyd, of course, as is the want of these things. The Japanese master car, master sounds, they have the best jackets. This jacket is just beautiful. You get the original master sound insert and the insert with the lyrics. But this record, the master sound recording, is a little bit different. Um, it, it says master sound on, this, on the label. Can you see that? Um, I played this earlier today. Firstly, what a lovely record, recorded, I want to say it's in between animals and, and the wall. Um, and Richard Wright does a really cool job. It is, it's sufficiently different from a Pink Floyd record for there to be some distance. But there's also an identity that's there. Of course, some of his Pink Floyd mates play on this, so you'll always, you're always going to hear that full lugubrious sound but man it sounds massive <laughs> it's really massive yeah yeah really impressed with it really really impressed thankfully there were two in the box and one of them is now nestling on my shelf um and i've got this one which is pretty cool oh, all right so we've got i'm gonna go here next i've never had this before either this is the japanese first press of kiss alive also magnificent gatefold just utterly beautiful i you know, just looks like honestly maybe just a little bit of a mark here but that is it fantastic condition japanese first press comes with the key piece of memorabilia 
which is the magazine. And the magazine is in, or the, well, more of a photo booklet, is in perfect condition. Honestly, perfect. And this sleeve is what this live album is all about. So infamously, the first three records, Dress to Kill, Kiss, and I can't remember what the second one is, is it Hotter Than Hell maybe, um, were kind of moderate successes in kind of the Bible Belt, I guess, of, of um, the US. And their record company, Casablanca, were almost broke. There's the lyric sheet. Not particularly important for Kiss Records, I don't think. But here's that Casablanca, famous Casablanca label with Bogart. I can't remember his first name, but he ran the label. That was his play on words. Um, and they decided to make their fourth album a live album because they were a cracking live band, but the, the studio albums just weren't catching on. They were doing okay, but the record company was in trouble. And so, was it Billy Kramer? I think was the producer. And they recorded five or six shows, various cities, Detroit and others, in front of thousands of fans. And they recorded the crowd noise and the cannons and the explosions and the just mayhem of the Kiss Live show. But then they went into the studio and they unapologetically just enhanced everything. And this record then just took off like a train and became, even to this day, amongst you know Kiss aficionados, this is still, still the one that people say is their best album. So anyway, there you go. The Japanese first press. I'm not a Kiss fan, but I couldn't resist playing the first song. Firstly, because I didn't know it. Deuce is not a song I know. And even Finbar, when I played earlier, was like, whoa, that's loud, Dad. <laughs> I've got one other live album here that I'm going to throw into the mix. You've seen this one before. But this is a beautiful copy of Queen Live Killers again. Superb Japanese gatefold, but of course, what's beautiful if you can find it about this record is that the red and green sleeves on the inside that you can kind of see there were replicated by the Japanese into red translucent vinyl and of course. <laughs> green translucent vinyl can you see me so there you go queen live magic another iconic double live album japanese first press wow <laughs> that is uh that is an opening that is an opening gambit now do i go here actually i'm gonna go here i got a couple of sealed records that i want to tell you about one is Californication, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now, it's quite hard to know exactly what record this is because um, it's sealed. I think it's the 2012 um, reissue, but I can't be sure. And then I also have, and this is really interesting, the Walmart exclusive blue vinyl of Metallica's Ride the Lightning, sealed. Uh, this one's probably three or four years, three or three years old, probably the first run of Walmart exclusives. Oh my gosh. I have this, which is the Australian, fantastic condition, Australian first press of Prince's Sign of the Times. Excellent condition with um, sleeves and all perfect working order. Great record, of course. One of the greatest opening tracks of all time, the soundtrack, but also has the cross, which um, a good friend of mine, Charlie, kind of lobbied to me one day as something pretty special. It was a song I'd never really thought much about. And... When he put it on my radar, I was like, whoa, how have I not realized how special that song is? And um, and a lot of it is because of Prince's drumming, which is pretty spectacular. My gosh, where do I go now? 
you know what? I'm going to go here. Um, complete change of scene. This is something that came to my mind today because I went to see a movie today. I went to see The Zone of Interest, which is the movie that won the recent Academy Award for uh, Best Foreign Feature and also won, which is of, also of interest to me, the Oscar for Best Sound. Now, it is a very disturbing movie and it's about Rudolf Hoss, who was the commandant of Auschwitz and he was the person that led the four-year construction of the concentration camp and it's the movie doesn't really deal with that it is more about the family life of the family home which was literally right outside the gate of the camp and the sound design is about what you can hear about what's going on in the camp during their idyllic family life it's quite something and World War I, as opposed to World War II, was an area of fascination for Susie and the Banshees, particularly this, Join Hands, their second record. Now this, the, the sleeve, is a kind of, a, a, they had this idea of kind of four kids that couldn't get it to work. Now they settled on this, this image of four, what looked like grenadiers to me, almost like toy soldiers. The opening track is um, based on a poem set in the round Flanders. And so you've got these beautiful images. So Susie and the Banshee's second record, Join Hands, was released in 1979. And really, I was thinking, what is this? It's not punk. It's it's not new wave. This is I think this is clearly a post punk record. There are several tracks on here where Susie's vocals are double tracked and they really pop. Um, it was well regarded at the time. I think its reputation is only growing with time. And this Japanese first press is super rare and hard to find. Okay, I am going to go for some ska next. And this is a fun item. This is a German picture disc of stupidity that I think was Bad Manners. I think it might be their last album. Um, I played this earlier for Finbar and we had a good laugh at it. It's very entertaining, particularly some of these opening track. The opening track, Fat Man, was, uh, was one that uh, made us smile and has been ripped off for many a, a funny, funny kind of uh, lewd song, let's say. But uh, cyber, c Cider Drinking and uh, Ingerland are also cut from similar cloth. So for those of you who like your ska, that is a really beautiful item and in fantastic condition and plays really well as well. Okay, I've got a few more to go. This is just one of my favorite compilations it's really hard to find in japanese i've only seen it very rarely i've got one on my own shelf but it is the japanese best of blondie um listen to this heart of glass and this is um the the, the one of the things that was the selling point of the best blondie at the time was they had a new mix of um heart of glass which is the opening track and it's a belter it's so good uh, Denise, The Tide is High, Sunday Girl, Dreaming, Hanging on the Telephone, Rapture, Picture This, Union City, Blue, Call Me Atomic, Ripper to Shreds. Ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, hard to find, fantastic condition on the Christmas label, the best of Blondie. Um, I have three more to go. I have one other Rolling Stones here. The Japanese did a wonderful job of compiling Rolling Stones songs into these really psychedelic uh, kind of um, sleeves. And this one, if you'll, you'll notice, has, is one of these ones that has a, a kind of a little book in the middle, has the full discography of the band. 
it has the lyrics and these with these kind of images but the track list on this one is really really interesting uh i'm just going to give you a quick rundown so side one is kind of more early uh the, the kind of pop tell me satisfaction cloud get off my cloud tears go by 19th nervous breakdown that moves into painted black mother's little helper but then side two let's spend the night together ruby tuesday she's a rainbow jumping jack flash honky tonk woman and let it bleed um yeah that's a beautiful thing and they made these records with the original recordings uh, um, on the london label they sound really good and they're really psychedelic and i really i like the uh the obi on this one so there's that and then two shortcuts royalty to finish on one i prefer more than the other i'm gonna go with this one i really really like the japanese first press rumors really 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 good if you don't have a good copy that's fantastic but this is stellar the japanese first press of tusk wonderful sounding record um last week i spoke about tango in the night the recent kevin gray remix being the best sounding um i think the mac album that i'd heard it took over from this this is now my second favorite now, this japanese first press of tusk is shortcuts royalty for a reason so many of you have it if any of you don't have it yet it's a beautiful copy love it brilliant album great sounding record so quick recap we have two Fleetwood Mac, we have a couple of Rolling Stones, we get Sticky Fingers, and this really beautiful piece. Um, the best of Blondie, you just can't go wrong. And the rather fantastic stupidity, bad manners, we've got Susie and the Banshees, we've got Prince, we've got two sealed records, we've got Metallica and the chili peppers we have the translucent queen live killers there it is the japanese first press a kiss and you know what i think there's another they messaged me saying there were two of these which i think means that there's another one coming so there might be two of those the really special really special master sound of thriller the master sound of um of richard wright's wet dream and then finally the japanese first press of sticky fingers with brown sugar a single <laughs> welcoming welcoming comments is that my best rock and pop list ever please let me know <laughs> if you would like to be on the price list which i think is going to be interesting uh on wednesday then please ping me that's a uh, shortcuts records short cuts records aus at gmail.com you'll also find it in the in the uh, in the channel notes for shortcuts records here on youtube okay if you've made it this far thank you hope you find that interesting love as always bye